Okay, so I have on the line with me, Sylvain Henri. Is that how I pronounce your name? Uh, well, actually, it's Henry. It's pronounced the English. Sylvain Henry. Yep. And where are you from? I'm from Ottawa, Canada. And can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Oh, myself, I'm, uh, most of my life I worked uh, in marketing, sales, business development, event management. But I have a Bachelor's of Science degree in uh, biochemistry from McGill. And um, my hobby is uh, I've adopted a few social causes, and, uh, um, and uh, I'm working on them. I've achieved some of them, and the others I'm still working on. Which are the ones that you've already worked on that are completed? Well, uh, the first one was uh, my son and I, and some other friends as well, too, uh, helped to stop the fluoridation of the municipal drinking water supply in uh, Gatineau, a population of 300,000 people. And that was uh, accomplished in about four days' time. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. So, How did you do that? Well, uh, first of all, we looked at the facts, and it, uh, we found out that the 17 uh, councillors of the 17, 17 districts of uh, Gatineau and the mayor were... Uh, they had a major opinion that uh, fluoridation should take place. They had uh, consulted the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, how do you say, the seller of the equipment and so on. And uh, but uh, they decided to uh, to tell the public before, and that was an opportunity. And so I uh, asked some friends and to uh, to come and uh, speak, and uh, I went there and myself to speak. We were given two minutes each, no more, not a second more, and everything was on record. Uh, okay, they asked for a name and, you know, do you live in this city, that kind of thing. It was televised on uh, CBC. And uh, so I gave my two minutes worth, and all my friends did, but we had met previously to make sure that uh, we didn't, uh, uh, there wasn't, uh, how do you say, any overlap in what we're saying, we're, we, that we all had important points to contribute. And uh, after all our two minutes were recorded, and uh, they asked us to uh, sign in a book and so on, um, the uh, the counselors looked uh, a little puzzled because they thought that this was just going to go ahead and the public would uh, uh, go ahead with it, would follow whatever decision they deemed best for us. And um, so anyways, at any rate, we, uh, we sent emails back to the uh, mayor and the counselors, and they asked them, uh, well, what are you going to do? They said, well, we're going to have a, a closed-door vote. And we said, no way you're not having a closed-door vote. We want to see who's voting for what. This should be a public vote. And anyways, the, uh, the final compromise was that it would be an open uh, vote where the councillors will decide, will vote for the, this issue or against it. And, uh, but the, we could be there as long as we didn't speak, and that was fine with us. So um, we made sure that we uh, were very wide awake during the session. Uh, the night before this vote, we made sure we uh, sent a lot of emails to those uh, uh, who needed a bit of convincing, positive emails, and, uh, you know, evidence-based uh, uh, reasons. And to make a long story short, the vote was 17 against fluoridation and 2-4. Wow. Uh, that was big. Wow, that's really good. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, it, it dispelled the notion that you have to have uh, 10 million people to uh, email somebody or, you know, to bug somebody in, uh, in power to get something done because we're just a group of a dozen people and, and we did it. So that, that's, uh, that's a lot of hope for the rest of us who uh, still have uh, fluoride in our water. That's a good success to kind of uh, reflect back on to. So what about your other, um, other successes or projects? Well, another one was called A Family Physician for Every Citizen. It was uh, nationwide, and that was uh, done about a year and a half ago. And uh, I had convinced uh, several hundred uh, people to uh, email uh, ministers of health and uh, provincial leaders and, um, and also the National uh, Health Canada and, and uh, <coughs> asking how come or what are you doing to get, get the 8 million Canadians who don't have a family physician uh, to get one, and we just want to know what you are doing, what you have done, mm -hmm. and it turns out that uh, a few of them did respond to us saying that, uh, <laughs> they're saying that, oh, there's progress. Well, you have two more doctors in Canada, that's progress. You know, that's not progress. We're not children. Mm -hmm. uh, to make a long story short, uh, we had one success in British Columbia where the premier of that province said uh, to us that by the year 2014 that would be achieved. Every citizen in that province would have a family physician or access to a family physician. So 
that that was fun, and that was very quick and you know and cheap also. Well, very good. What else? Well, my my biggest one that I'm proudest of uh, happened in 1984. Premier René Lévesque was uh, leading the province back then. And uh, 83, 84, some, uh, well, you, you know, your audience or you might remember this was a terrible recession, high in, unemployment rate. And uh, so, uh, to make a long story short, this was the first time in my life I was an activist for something, and I didn't know what my strength was. And uh, it, didn't, it turned out it wasn't public speaking. I was horrible at that. I was, at least at the time. And uh, I said, uh, my, my strength is finding out timing when to do something, when to do a social cause, that most people would jump in. And so uh, I looked at November 15th, 1984. That was the anniversary uh, that uh, Premier René Lévesque, uh, his being in power in the province. And so uh, we gave him a... Uh, um, back then, uh, Internet didn't exist. Only the rich had fax machines back then. And uh, so uh, I convinced them, maybe 65,000 people, to send written, handwritten letters with a message that is generally saying, uh, dear Premier, help us, help ourselves, either create or find suitable employment that is suitable to our education. And uh, that was it. It was very, very short. Wow. And uh, That's amazing, that many people. Oh, yeah. And then uh, a few days after that, uh, we made front page headline and and I kept the newspaper clipping. It's available in the, on the Internet if you do a search in the Google News. The archives, uh, Montreal Gazette, November 21st, you'll see that uh, Premier uh, René Lévesque responds to us in two full pages. Wow. And uh, saying, uh, uh, there's, he said, there's a revolution in progress in the province of Quebec. It's peaceful, but evidently permanent. It's my leader and duty as the... Uh, uh, sorry, it's my, it's my duty as the... Uh, uh, the premier of the province and leader of the Parti Québécois, to agree with what has been asked of me to do in a very democratic way. And from now on, I shall make uh, job creation uh, and job simulation programs and helping small businesses the number one priority of government. And he did follow up uh, on what he said. He made good on it with hundreds of millions of dollars being spent that way. And he said he would put the discussion of the Sovereignty Association aside until that was a so we gave him a free referendum on his anniversary, and he responded very, very democratically. And uh, it was amazing that that what was achieved back then, uh, but now with the Internet and now with cell phones and everything, it's even more difficult to achieve the, the same results. Mm -hmm. But uh, now recently uh, the chemtrail issue, mm -hmm. uh, last year, uh, just before Canada Day, I convinced several hundred people, perhaps as many as a thousand, to email Premier, uh, Prime Minister, sorry, uh, Stephen Harper, uh, asking him six uh, basic questions about um, geoengineering going on over Canada, and he did not respond to any one of us. And we did a second mailing campaign 90 days after that, reminding him that we had contacted him first, and still there was no response. Wow. And there, I figure that... He must be thinking, oh, this, it's just a few hundred people or maybe a thousand people. I mean, it's nothing compared to the 30 million Canadians. The rest of Canada is still sleeping. They're not concerned about this. Mm -hmm. So probably that's his thinking. And all we wanted to know was the truth about it. If it, He could have said, no, it's a conspiracy. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. And we wanted to have a response on paper. Mm -hmm. and we didn't get it. Yeah, but, that's the least that you're owed. Right. Mm -hmm. So... We haven't g given up. We're just uh, increasing our forces so the next time uh, he won't be able to avoid us. So basically you're asking for an answer to what's going on in the sky? Yeah. Who is spraying us? Who gave permission? Who is uh, paying for this? Who's funding this spraying? What are they spraying us with? Uh, have there been toxicological studies about uh, you know, what they're spraying us with? What is the purpose? Why are they doing this? Where does the Prime Minister work? Out of Ottawa? Is Ottawa being sprayed? Constantly. How come he can't notice that? Well, we don't know if he notices it at all, uh, because he's not responding to us. Wow. 
That's really strange. Um, maybe, Mr. Prime Minister, you should look up in the sky in Ottawa every once in a while. Yeah, and uh, in his case, it's not so strange, I think, because apparently people with other causes have approached him, and still they, you know, they, they, they're speaking to a deaf ear. They, they, he, he does not respond to Canadians. Well, let's have a plea. He is the majority leader. Let's have a plea right now. Mr. Prime Minister, look up in the sky. Those things that are staying in the sky a lot longer than 20 seconds, can you look at that, please? Right. Well, let's hope that does the trick. Hmm. Well, what do you know about what's in the sky? Well, there's two ways to find out what's in the sky. The first is by doing Internet research. And the second is by gathering empirical uh, data. Mm -hmm. I, I've done both. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, I notice chemtrails because I'm 53, and I look at the skies all the time. I'm a very uh, romantic person, and I just love the skies. And what's happening now, I haven't seen in my childhood, in my teenage years, my young adulthood, my you know middle age, I haven't seen it at all. I mean, you have spraying... Um, you know, dotted patterns. I mean, stop, go, stop, go. Planes don't stop and go. I've seen that. Engines just, just do not s shut off and then start again in mid-flight. Exactly. They, they don't have any brakes up there, so obviously they are spraying something. Yeah. And also another observation was that the spraying in uh, the Ottawa region happens from one city limit to the other. That means it has a beginning and has the, an end. It's not continuous. Yes, I've noticed that in Burlington. And so also from uh, empirical uh, experiment, uh, well, observation only, just as eye observation, these trails become clouds. The regular contrails, condensation trails behind jets, disappear like almost instantly. They don't linger over the, in the skies for uh, hours or a whole day. Right. They only last like about 15 to 20 seconds or so. That's it. But these become huge clouds and they... If enough of those are spread over a city, then it makes the uh, the sky hazy. Yes, we're hazy all the time here. And uh, lately, and it's in. It, I've been noticing uh, from different parts of Canada and different parts of the world too that <clears throat> the activity has recently been increased. And uh, so to collect the so the the second thing was uh, in, in internet data. I looked at some people actually did some rainwater analysis under rain cloud wow. conditions, and they've analyzed high levels of aluminum, barium, strontium, and some other uh, you know, minerals, metals. And um, so there are copies of the, uh, the lab results of these tests available on the Internet for different countries. People who know how to use Google can access these, or you can even see them on uh, YouTube. Um, so, and some people have done some hair analysis because we breathe the stuff, we may drink it, uh, we may eat it through uh, foods that have been sprayed, uh, but eventually it, some of it ends up in our hair. Because, uh, and, and anyways, you can analyze the hair to see what kind of, uh, if there are any anomalies. So that's Internet data. And to, to help me collect empirical data, what I did is I created a Google Doc form and um, I, I invited people from all over the world to fill it up and say what they thought about chemtrails. Is it happening? Are they convinced that this is, this is something that is different from contrails and so on? And uh, I asked a number of questions like, uh, how come the pilots that are spraying the stuff are not coming out and telling us they're doing it? And uh, so I collected information. I received data from 26 different countries, about some 300 people. Mm -hmm. And... They're all saying the same thing. Wow. They're saying that uh, they know it's been occurring for several years in their country. Mm -hmm. They themselves and their family are convinced. In some cases, the entire communities are convinced. Mm -hmm. They're saying that uh, the pilots are not coming out because uh, they're under orders not to. Uh, their, their livelihood might be at stake if uh, uh, they did reveal what they were doing. That's maybe maybe even their lives, too. Perhaps, too. Yes, stranger things uh, have happened. Mm -hmm. Presidents get shot. Oh, several of them got shot. Wow. You know, even popes get shot. So nothing is, is strange anymore, and this is entirely a, a possibility. Mm -hmm. So using this information, I was convinced myself that this was happening. People thought as I did, and people from at least 26 countries from uh, my efforts. Mm -hmm. And so then I created a video in uh, my Canadian spark.
Antarctica's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I invited, where I invite pilots, mechanics of airplanes, uh, support maintenance crew for uh, aircraft yep. that are involved in, in uh, this uh, activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they know about it at least a little bit. Exactly. And to come out and contact me in sort of a, uh, uh, a chemtrail confessional hotline. Well, that sounds like a great idea. And uh, But I, I, I tell them beforehand, I said, I don't want to know your name. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have specific information about you. Mm -hmm. I just want to start developing that relationship to know you exist. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to know where you are so we can find out if there's whistleblower protection in your area. Perfect. Because we want to protect the sources of information that may save us. Right. So I will stand with you. Well, thank you. Very good. So I guess who we kind of want to hear from are mechanics. Yes. Mechanics, maybe possibly guys who are servicing a plane that may have made an unscheduled landing at a local regular airport. Right. Maybe that mechanic is uh, working on the lavatory system or other parts of the plane, and if they notice anything like uh, piping that maybe ought not to be there, mm -hmm. maybe they can in inform you. Do you have a hotline phone number? Yes, it's uh, excuse me, six one three six hundred five three two three. So that's six one three six hundred lead L E A D. That's right. Yeah. Okay, that's six one three six hundred L E A D. Perfect. And we're looking for those leaders to to come up and help us discover the truth, and once we know the true truth, we will demand explanations. And, uh, so who else are we looking for? We're looking for pilots. Pilots, mechanics, uh, also uh, support crew, suppliers of chemicals who bring these chemicals to the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be them as well, too. So I've even heard that some of these planes are remotely controlled. It's possible, but even if they're remotely controlled, you do need somebody behind a, a computer somewhere with a joystick, uh, you know, watching uh, these planes. So there's a remote control pilot. So we also are asking for remote control pilots to come out. Yes, yes, those as well too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, an important thing about these planes, <laughs> they're different. First of all, most of them are white. Secondly, mm -hmm. yep. they, they, none of them have that I've observed and that many of my friends have observed, have any markings on them. Yeah, I've seen pictures with uh, no markings on the underbody. So that, that should be illegal as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I've actually checked out that act or something like that, and it's the transport, transport is regulations or something like that, and it does not specify that it must be on the bottom, mm. but it does give guidelines for uh, size and the uh, spacing and stuff like this. So uh, maybe what we need is just like a regular car having a license plate, we need to be able to identify an airplane from the ground. Right. Who knows what country it comes from? Sorry? We, because we don't, we don't even know what country it is. Yes, the country, yes. So maybe a flag and uh, or, you know, CA or C or US or whatever. Right. Plus an identifying uh, serial number of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it makes it more difficult for uh, uh, security uh, law officials to do anything about it if they can't identify who's doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if we do find out that they're spraying something dangerous, mm -hmm. how can we say who did it? Right, exactly. That's the whole purpose of having um, license plates on a car. If there's a drunk driver or a hit-and-run guy, you grab the plate if you can, and you bring it to the authorities. Exactly. And <laughs> another thing, too, a lot of people are still in doubt that this may be happening. I just have one thing to say to these people. Mm -hmm. uh, to access the World Health Organization statistics, uh, mortality statistics for the uh, different countries of the world. And uh, there's one chart that uh, talks about the main uh, reasons we all why people die, main causes of death, uh, by different categories, developed countries and developing countries and so on. Mm -hmm. About 10 years ago, uh, respiratory diseases you know, or problems 
uh, used to be like maybe uh, you know seventh or eighth position. Last year it was number two position mm-hmm. as a leading cause of death in the world. Perhaps this year it could be the number one position. So this is no small thing to you know to uh, not to consider. You're suggesting that the, these deaths are from chemtrails, possibly. Yes, it's difficult to prove. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a toxicologist. Well, it makes sense because if they are spraying what people are claiming that is being sprayed, it will cause bodily harm. Oh, and, definitely. And even the fact of um, if if that isn't getting you, I just think that those clouds, that the chemtrails that form clouds, thin clouds, they tend or will block vitamin D, that which is, which is essential for life. Yes. That, to me, again, is bodily harm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, it has an effect on the environment. It affects the pH of soils. Yes. And so on. Right. And, uh, right. And so things won't grow as well. And some people ask me, well, maybe it comes from other sources, but I'm sorry, rainwater should not contain metals. Right. You know, uh, it, uh, traditionally, you don't see metals falling from the sky. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, like barium and aluminum. Right. Or, or whatever. This is, these are the things that I've heard from the video. What in the world are they spraying on YouTube? And also, another, for those who are still not convinced, they can look at satellite photos of our countries, and you actually see the spray lines uh, over big, big, major parts of the, of the North American continent, or mm-hmm. especially over the U.K. Mm-hmm. So you can, they can be seen from space. Mm-hmm. So, so what kind of people have you talked to that have made you have an interesting whoa reaction? Well, the radio stations, uh, you know, like yours, uh, are starting to be interested in this subject, mainly because there's a lot of internet chatter about it, particularly in YouTube. Mm-hmm. Anybody who puts in the word chemtrails in YouTube. Uh, you know, he has a whole weekend ahead of him of uh, videos to look at. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, so, um, um, sorry, what was your question again? Um, you've, you've encountered many different kinds of people, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, what are some of the...